start this episode off, we are going to be finishing off Fremenic Isles, this quest. For some reason I thought it was very quick, but then I remembered it's very easy, but fairly long. Um, it's just annoying, a lot of the stuff to do, but there's 20k uh, strength experience, a load of random experience. But the most important part of this quest, and the whole reason we've done it, is the Helm of Natus Knot, also known as Nezi Helm. After this dialogue completes, the quest station should come up. But the reason we got this is for Barrows, of course. Uh, if you guys don't already know, uh, the Helm of Nathan's Knot gives absolutely... If we just take everything off real quick. Helm of Nathan's Knot gives absolutely no negative bonuses in attack. So don't get negative mage, don't get negative range. Uh, it gives very good defensive bonuses. Uh, obviously a free melee strength, just like the Berserk Helm, but also a free prayer bonus. So we've now got a new best in slot for melee when we're not on task. And a new best in slot for Barrows. Um, I'm not going to really bother showing you my barrier setup because there's nothing special about it. It's just a standard barrier setup, obviously, other than, um, sort of not void, but it's just going to be just rune armor. That's literally it. There's nothing special to show, rune crossbow, Ivan's blast. But if I decide to change things dramatically, I will show you guys how I plan to go about it. But for now, it's just the best defense I've got, which is rune, until I get tank legs. I'm hoping I get them fairly early because I don't want to do barriers for too long with Ivan's blast in all honesty. So our first Barrow's Chest, I haven't actually got my reaction for this because it was really loud. But we got Varric's Helm on our first chest. That is literally such a good first chest and I just couldn't believe it to be honest. Well ever since I got that Varric's Helm, obviously things have slowed down which is, you know, to be expected. We're on seven Barrow's Chests right now. And I sat there and I thought, I said I wouldn't show my inventory and whatnot, but I feel like it might be quite important when I think about it. Because everyone does things differently and you guys might be interested in how I'm doing it. And this is my mage set, which, uh, which I'm wearing right now. It's pretty much the best I can get. Uh, the fire cape is the pure fact that we get prayer bonus, as well as the bonuses for melee, which helps with Carol. Um, the Varric Helm was a Nezi Helm, but I pretty much feel like the Varric Helm is just an upgrade. You get a couple of minus, I think minus six range compared to the Nezi Helm, and maybe minus two magic, but you get so much more defense, it's crazy. Uh, now my switch is our, we've got Rune Crossbow, and we've got the Zamrock Dehyde Chaps, and Armadillo Chaps. Uh, not chaps, the high body, sorry, and then an accumulator. So my range self is that, which, you know, pretty standard. Then I've just got pretty much the two-way switch for melee and a DDS to spec with, which is very, very simple. My clicks are absolutely awful right now because I've only just woken up. But I take uh, a super set as well as a ranging potion just to help with it because oh, I've got plenty of them. There's no harm. I take a prayer potion just in case I get Derek in the tunnel and I need it. I will normally tank Derek, but if, as soon as he hits me, I'll stay above his max hit. As soon as he hits me, I use a prayer pot, but 9 times out of 10 he won't hit me, um, which I'm very, very surprised about. I suppose the super defense does help. Uh, I've currently got all the blood runes, mime runes, chaos runes and, uh, with me that I have in my whole bank. So I'm curious, I'm, you know, I'll keep up with what I've got. Uh, we've got up to 3.3k death runes so far. But my method is to use uh, Mauritania legs to bug her up. I'll then walk up. It's quite a slow method, but I don't want to use any supplies. I don't want to have to go for anything. And it's probably one of the best things I can do right now. I'll walk up to Berg the Rot. Uh, now I will turn my run on. Um, if I save inventory spaces, I don't use super energies or anything. If I had stamina, it would be slightly different, I imagine. Um, <coughs> but once we're here, we'll do the run around. And even if I run out of prayer, I'll continue to do it. There's no point in me teleporting out to get prayer to come back. I can tank most of it. Eight grand wines is enough food. I haven't had any problem with the most food I've used in one run is three crown ones, which is, you know, that's pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with that, considering I'm only 75 defense, and I'm wearing bloody rune armor, which looks awful, but it's prayer bonus, so, you know, that's why I've got this on. Um, and then once I've done, I teleport to my house. I will then use the altar in my house to get my prayer back. I'll use the carol teleport to go right next to the bank, or the Edgeville uh, thing I've now changed to. I'll go straight to Edgeville from Amulet of Glory. Bank and then rinse and repeat. Obviously, it'll take quite a while to do this, but money after tank legs. I'm not looking for a really efficient way to do this. This is probably the most efficient for me right now. Varric's Helm's down. Hopefully, we get some tank legs. That'd be absolutely great. I'm hoping we get them soon. What an absolutely awful chest. Holy fuck. Like, what even the fuck was that? 4.95k. What the fuck? We just got Carol's crossbow on our 17th Barrow's chest. Honestly, it is not the best of items to get, but you know what? We're gonna make use of it. I got 70 bolt racks, which is obviously not many at all. But I wanna see what it's like for killing Arum because 
I'm never going to really use this thing otherwise. Maybe I'll use it as Zora, but I can't see me really using it there in all honesty. Because I won't have that many bolt racks unless I farm them. But I just want to try it out, because why not? I really forgot to record me actually getting it. Um, but it's not really that good of an item, but it's another unique. It's another Barrow's item we got. In 17 chests, we have a Varric's Helm and a Carol's Crossbow. Uh, get those tank legs now. Oh, wow. Back to back items, bro. Back to back items. And it's a Goffin's Helm. Oh, my. That's fucking sick. Let's go. Varax Helm, Goffin's Helm. This is fucking sick. No way. Oh, my God. Back to back to back. <gasps> and it's Torex Blade Legs. It's Torex Blade Legs. <laughs> Oh my god, I may sound like a little twat right now, but we just got back to back to fucking back. Oh my god. It's all good items, some of these fucking carols. Fuck, bro, look. We got carols on 17, Guff and Helm on 18, and Turex Play Legs on 19. That's fucking go, bro. So, Barrows is completed for now. And this is our Barrows tab, which we're going to keep until we get full Barrows or... All sets, then we're going to slowly transfer them over to here. Obviously, Torex play legs I haven't put in there because that has straight up replaced my rune plate legs. Let's just have a quick look because I don't think I've bothered looking. The difference in these two now we've got rune plate legs, there's our defensive stats. Whap on, whap on, whack on Torex. That is near enough double, just under double the stats. That is honestly insane. So happy with that. We got tank legs. We're going to leave Barrows for now and we're going to go do a hell of a lot of Slayer. So we just got our brine rat task and i hate brine rats and i know that a cannon's half decent here i know it's not multi combat but it'll just i don't really care about using the cannon too much in multi combat there's certain tasks i won't use in multi combat but every time i get a gargoyle task i get steel bars so i may as well use um may as well use them turn it into cannibals and this just means i'm going to make cannibals every time i complete a gargoyle task we've only got 600 now but you know what if I don't use them, I'll never use them. So we're going to make sure we use these. Hopefully make this Brian Rat task a bit more... <sighs> just less annoying, because I honestly hate Brian Rats so much. I, I hate them with a passion. So we're just going to sit here and we're going to do a task like this. I just thought I'd let you guys know, because this is where my cannon used, this is where cannibals are going to be going. So I'll see you guys in the next clip whenever I'm doing something interesting. There's 85 strength. It is time for us to buy ourselves a lovely Slayer upgrade. Well, I don't know what you want to call it. I suppose it's a Slayer upgrade. We just completed our 120th task. Now we're doing tasks at Duradel because we reach, uh, reach, I don't speak, recently reached 100 combat. So we're getting a few more Slayer points per task and per 10 tasks. And I personally prefer Duradel's Slayer waiting list. Um, but we've got 100. 20 tasks complete, we're now on 406 points, we're going to see what our next assignment is, great demons, very nice, good experience, and we are going to buy player ring, where is it, ring bling, boom, I'm going to go craft a load of slayer rings now, and get on with my great demon task, but now that we have that, I was looking at what I want, and I was thinking I'm not going to get a slayer helm for ages, because well, I don't really need it, but at the same time, if I get it out of the way, I don't have to worry about it, then I can work on extensions and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, extensions aren't needed, but a Slayer Helmet, I can't use them on Aberrant Spectres. I've got a Salve Amulet, for example, though. I can't use them on Dust Devils. It'd just be nice to have it done as well. Also, defense bonuses allow me to tank that slight bit more when I'm doing certain tasks. But now we have Slayer Rings. I'm going to go make a load. Uh... Whilst I'm here, I might as well just buy all these off the sky real quick, because I'm going to need them. And hopefully, I want to get to a Slayer ASAP. Obviously, it won't be soon, but I want to get ASAP so we can get Necreals, because that will help with farm runs in the future. What? What just happened? The clue scroll page didn't come up, but I just got my loot. What the fuck? Wait, you're in Warma. That's actually really good. I think. Rune, wow. I think that's a clue item. You guys probably already guessed there's only one reason we're here. 
If you don't already know, we're here for a granite shield, and granite shield means DKs, which means berserkering. Yeah, that's about it, really. No, no! <laughs> right, I might as well explain this to you guys right now. So I've got a room wall hammer. Oh, sorry, i got two room wall hammers and a long bone. Room wall hammers are 1 in 128. Long bone is 1 in 400. And granite shield is also 1 in 128. So, yeah. Fuck. Oh, we got it! You know, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's obviously not that much of a grind because it's fairly simple, but we had to kill 194 of these bastards and we got three drops which are either a lower drop rate or a same drop rate as a fucking thing but we finally got the granite shells Now, I've been sitting there thinking Rex takes quite a while to spawn I'm going to want an elk in between kills So I might go make a load of maple longbows uh, I've already got a load of maple longbows in the bank In fact, you know what? I'll show you whilst I'm here. Take two seconds to show you, I think, anyway. We've got, um, I think, a load of maple longbows just sitting in the bank. And I've got a load of flax. If I turn them into maple long longbows actually strung, then, uh, you know, we can out them. So if we look, maple longbow, we've got tons of maple longbows. If we can string those, then you never know. We could uh, make a bit of profit whilst we're killing wrecks. Rock shell plate. All right. Okay. That's first unique. Get out of the way, I guess. I never actually showed what my gear was going to be for doing DKs. Now, the way I've done it is I used my main to get me in there. I suicided my main. It can be done without it, but it just makes it a hell of a lot easier. So the idea is I got my main to run there. Yeah, my main killed Supreme, and then after that, once Prime's like busy, I'd get my iron in. I'd bring it in and get him safe. Once he's there, I just log out my other account and I'm pretty much in. Once I'm there, trips are long enough. Uh, the first trip wasn't as long because of the pure fact that I uh, didn't take enough anti poisons. And then the second trip, I forgot to charge my Ivan staff, so the, that was just complete embarrassment. The third trip, this is what the KC that we're up to. Put it in here. 96 kill count. And we got the Berserker ring. And I'm not going to lie, nothing was dropping whatsoever. I was getting a couple of food drops here and there. There was just a hell of a lot of shit, steel kite shields and stuff like that. It was honestly awful, but then I got the Berserker Ring, I'm really, really happy, just under the KC. So I'm, I can't complain of it at all. In the process, we did get, uh, I don't know where I put them. Wherever I put these, uh, I can't even spell. Rock Shell Plates, we've got two of these. They're absolutely useless, uh, but they're both the same drop rate as a Berserker Ring. So, you know, it was kind of going at the time. But now that we've got the Berserker Ring, that can mean only one thing. We need to imbue it. And to imbue it, we're going to need a hell of a lot of Nightmare Zone points. 650k to be precise. Now, you know, 650k is not uh, many at all when you think about it. If you've got enough uh, bosses to kill in the Nightmare Zone. And there is one boss we are missing that I really want. And that is the Dream Mentor boss. Now, I have everything for a Dream Mentor. I just need to do the quest. It's a very, very quick quest, I believe. It's just, I've got to do a boss fight. And last time I done it my main, I just hated it. So I'm just hoping I enjoy it a bit more on this account. But once we have that done, we are then going to go straight to the Nightmare Zone and imbue this ring and then get back on my Slayer. Just done the Dream Mentor fight. Honestly, <laughs> I was expecting the first one to fuck me over a couple of times. But we just went in there and fucking destroyed him. I used about four food in the whole fight, so I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, this is the gear setup I took. It's Nothing special, really. I just took tanky gear along... Well, I say tanky gear. The Varex Helm was the tanky part. I could have taken a Nezzy Helm, but I took the Varex Helm. Um, quite a torso. I could have taken a Rune Plate body, but I just feel like the torso is just so much better because of the offensive stats it gives you. I took the Berserker Ring as well, and I, it may have helped, may not have. Uh, the DDS was for the first boss and for the last one. first one just to get down quicker, and the last one to make it a tiny bit quicker instead of him keep running away. And we had a nice little range switch for the second and third because you can safe spot them completely. So that is the gear setup that we run with. And honestly, it was very, very easy. And this should be the quest complete, which means we can go to Nightmare Zone and then view this ring at 10 times easier. And we also unlock a few spells on the Lunar Spellbook, which is very, very cool. I don't think at the moment any of them are useful, but later on, like there's definitely some that probably will be useful and just handy to have. Humidify, I'm thinking, might end up being handy. I'm not sure. But, of course, we get two quest points. 
we get 15k hit points experience and 10k magic and i believe this lamp here we can put 15k into any combat skill other than prayer and attack and personally this is going to go into magic i think because magic's not going to be the easiest for me to level up uh strength's really easy so i don't really care for that 15k magic experience we are now 80 magic that is awesome we also got 74 magic in the middle of the quest we can now string jewelry pretty much useless <laughs> i can just get balls of wool um but that that's pretty much what the stats are looking like really easy quest uh, we're coming up to 1650 total we're currently sitting on 38.3 million total experience 211 quest points the quests are slowly getting done for when i need them i've still got quite a lot of quests to do but at the same time they're all quests that don't need to be done yet and i'll just do them eventually now that we've got this i'm gonna go straight to the nightmare zone i'm not gonna bother showing you guys how i'm doing it because i'm by now most people know how nightmare zone is done if you guys do want to know how i've gone about it I can let you know, I guess. It's ask me in the comment section down below. But there's so many videos out there saying how to do Nightmare Zone. And it, but honestly, it depends on what quest you've done. It will differ for some people. I'm going to go find out what's best for me. And I'm just going to get cracking on with it. And I'll show you guys when I'm about to imbue the ring. So this is how the Nightmare Zone is going. There is a hell of a lot of bosses here. I said I wouldn't really show much. But I just thought I'd talk about it. Because the pure fact that I didn't really realise how fast this would be. Until I actually got in here. Um, I knew that you can get a hell of a lot of points from the Dream Mentor ones, and I'm not sure about the Everlasting and the Untouchable, but I know this one gives about 20k points, but in, uh, Inadequacy for me, which is the first boss you fight in Dream Mentor, currently gives me 52k points with the bosses I've set up. Uh, the main reason is because the Desert Treasure ones are in here, without them he gives like significantly less, but with Desert Treasure bosses it's 52k, it's honestly absurd. and. Things like Black Demon and Jungle Demon, uh, Demon sorry, give a fair chunk as well. There's a couple of bosses that are kind of annoying, but it's so easy to deal with them. I haven't been in, in here long at all. My inventory is completely scuffed because I made a few mistakes. I had to keep, keep coming in and out. Let's not talk about it. Now, the reason you may be asking why have I got these four items here and maybe these ice gloves are for this guy here, Fareed. Uh, you have to wear ice gloves to kill him. If you guys have done Desert Treasure, you will know what boss I'm on about. Uh, actually, I'm not actually sure he's from Desert... Oh yeah, of course it is, because I've got RFD bosses turned off. That's one of the things as well I recommend turning those off if you're doing this. But he's from Desert Treasure, so you need Ice Gloves to be able to kill him without him unequipping your weapon. So right now, Ice Gloves to attack him. I've got a range set out. There's two reasons I've got a range set out. One is for if... I believe it's... I have a Kareed... I don't know. The, there's an Ice Boss. Wherever the Ice Guy is in Desert Treasure. I haven't actually had him yet. But he casts Ice Barrage pretty much like every one second. He continuously freezes you and it's really fucking annoying. But if you take a little, a simple range setup, you can kill him from afar so it's not too much of an issue. Um, but if you don't have him in, you don't get anywhere near his point, many points an hour. So I highly suggest putting him in because it will just make it so much better. And the other reason I've got it is because if Damnus spawns in his second form, he will drain your prayer. Obviously, if we get our, uh, our prayer drained all the way... We can't flick rapid heal so the nightmare zone kind of fails but the idea is we won't kill him anyway but if we kill his first form by accident for a zappa or something like that then we can safe spot him behind other enemies and finish him off with range uh so it's a really really nice setup to have it's very simple it's, it's four inventory slots for this and then i, I pick a room pickup uh, axe up in here as you can see it's a nightmare zone one for slagolith and obviously barrows gloves which will pop out for ice gloves which i currently have equipped but I just want to show you this because I literally cannot believe how good this is for me and how fast I'm going through this. I'm just going to finish this trip and get loads of points spare because I'm going to get other rings at one point and I'll have points towards them already. I might even get enough points in here if I'm lucky enough to imbue another ring or another something. Maybe even the salve amulet, which I, to be honest, I'm tempted in doing because I'm not getting a slayer helmet yet. And it will help on my current task, conveniently, Aver Inspectors. But we'll have to see about it. Time to imbue the Berserker ring. It was like a half inventory run. I'm not even sure if it was half inventory. It was a very small run we done, but we got 890k points. It's absolutely ridiculous. But we do have 1.289 mil points, which means we can upgrade the Berserker Ring, imbue, boom, we now have an imbued Berserker Ring on the account. Now this is obviously going to give us 8 melee strength, and in the current gear I'm in, if we replace the helmet with a Slayer Mask, and if we're on task, our max hit is 43 without the ring it's 40 so this ring alone has increased our max hit by three which is absolutely crazy i'm so happy with it i didn't think i'd be doing 
a ring until later. I would, when I first thought about it, I wasn't really into going to Rex to solo it to get the ring, but it's, I felt like I just needed to do it. And honestly, I'm so happy I've done it. I'm so happy I've got the ring. This gear is going to be so nice for Slayer. Eventually, we're going to obviously get a better neck, uh, necklace and everything. But that isn't anytime soon. I'm actually so, so happy with what we've got on the account now. And I think it actually might be time for Slayer, like I've said multiple times. And I realize there's something else I should get. I mean, I might end up getting Proslite as well, just because it's annoying me that I don't have it and I'm using Monk Robes. But for now, I think we're good for Slayer. So I'm going to get back to it. Been meaning to do this for a little while, and that's clear out a bit of bank space. And I mean, there's only one way of doing that at the moment, other than to sort out what well, they're called treasure trail, two scroll items that I need for like certain emotes to go and build all the stashes. But I want to get 55 construction before I do that because most clues I do are hard anyway. But we can get the costume room now. This will save a few inventory spots in our bank, which will be very, very nice. It will also allow us to place. Uh, clue scroll items. Now the one we're looking for to start with, I'm not sure what fancy fancy dress the one we want. I believe it might be. It might be armor case. I know there's definitely this is what we want. We're gonna build the armor case, but I think it might be fancy dress. We're gonna build magic. We're gonna build fancy dress. Because in here, this is where we can store, if I show you guys real quick, I don't, know if, I don't know how it works, I've never used one of these in my life. Here we go, this is where we can store all easy clues in the game. All the items from easy clues that we get, we can store in here. This will save room. Half this stuff I will never want in my bank, so I'm just going to pretty much fucking shove them in here. Because it's a waste having them elsewhere. Now I think, we're going to build this. You know, we've got enough planks. Uh, I think this might be the one where we can put things like angler outfit. Frog. Okay, well, I was wrong. I'm going to need this one, I think. But I'm going to go get that, and I'm going to shove all the items I can in there, and I'll show you guys what I have and haven't put in all of these wardrobes. After putting those items in the house, we are down to 766 out of 808 spots. Obviously, there's so much more we can do. Um, but, you know, we'll do, we'll do it at one point. At the moment, we can't fit more. Like, I was going to put Prospector... Uh, angler and loads of other stuff but because of my construction level the only one i can build is like the first of each like case and they need to be upgraded to put more in there and to be honest they need to be upgraded fully to be able to fit a lot in there you can only like fit four sets rather than two sets if you upgrade it once i'm not sure if that's for all the wardrobes but it's pretty crazy but the main things we put in there was ham robes clue item robes we put some easy clue scroll items but we haven't got too many we put those in there uh, there's nothing that was important that went in there that i'm going to have to go there to use Eventually, like I said, there'll be Angler, there'll be Rogue, there will be Prospector in there and stuff like that, because that will say, that's like, just here, that's eight inventory spots right there that's saved from just these two here, which would be absolutely, like, insane later on, because it's getting hard already, because I haven't done my clue scroll stashes, which I really should. You get 55 construction, so I can do hard ones, because I have a lot of items in there. This could have actually gone in there, but never mind. But, I've just looked, and I noticed I have 197 seed. Uh, birds nest and 118 ring ones so you know what we're gonna open them now and we're gonna see what the hell we get we're gonna do 10 at a time and we're gonna open all of them and i'm pretty much just gonna uh open them all at once and at the end we'll see what we have because i feel like this would be slightly easier to do if i don't do it like that but we'll see what we get i'm gonna open all these like this I'm going to show you guys exactly what we get at the end seed wise and then after that I am going to do the rings. This is what we got from 197 seed nests. I was going to show you the rings but I just thought I can't show I could show you an exact amount because I was counting from my bank before but I'm not going to show you exactly what I get from the ring ones because that was interesting. The main thing I want to show you guys was the seeds to see what we're going to get and honestly I'm extremely disappointed in this. We have now our current, our highest tree we're doing at the moment uh, for farming, I forgot what they're called, not normal trees, the other trees, fruit trees is palm, the lowest we're doing is curry, so we've got 19 curry, 4 palm, and in the middle is pineapple, which we have 0, 0 pineapple seeds, so we've got these two, and the lowest tree we're doing is willow, which we've got 30 of, we've got 10 maple, and we got 2 
you, which is the tree we're supposed to be farming right now. Two you, and then one magic and a spirit. Other than that, we got... I don't think we're doing papaya. Banana, which is awful. Orange, which is awful. Acorns, which are awful. Apple, which is awful. Oh no, we do have pineapple. We had eight pineapple. Three cowcrat, you know, that's something else that's half decent. But we did look down here, and some teak seeds. The majority of it was just in pure shit seeds. These here, like these are, this is like 1k experience, 1.5k experience per run. Berry trees, maybe 2k. Like, I know it's experience. Oh, I'm going to use them. I'd be stupid not to. But we need a hell of a lot of experience to be able to get to these high levels. And 1k trees are just, they're not enough. This is dire. I'm not sure why the hell I've decided this. But there is a reason, but it's actually doing it. I'm going to do Monkey Madness 2. I want this quest done. This is one quest I'm not looking forward to doing on the account. I haven't done it before, and it just looks really boring. It doesn't look hard, it just looks really boring. And honestly, quests like this are probably one of my least favourite. Really long, a lot of stuff to it. I've heard that there's a, a kind of like a maze in there that people are in, get annoyed with. I just, I don't enjoy stuff like that, whether it's easy or not, I just hate doing it. But we're going to get Monkey Madness done. I believe I can do it with all my stats um, and my gear with a range in potion if I need to range something. But I want to get it done because eventually I'm going to want Zenite Shards. And the idea of Zenite Shards is me to get a Suffering and an Anguish for uh, what they're called, for Zora. And to do that, well, I'm going to need one of Grillers. And if I get to 87 Slayer and then do Monkey Madness 2, the only benefit is to have a higher strength level by that point, a whip, but. I'm going to need, then need to do more Slayer before I can even do Zora. So I'm trying to get stuff ready for when I hit 87. I don't know if it's going to actually happen because, well, to get Anguish, you need, what, 93 crafting, I believe? Let's have a quick look. To getting Anguish, we need 92 crafting, so you can do it with 87. So we're going to need 87 crafting. Obviously, at 84, we can get a Suffering. So we're looking at 87, so we're looking at 12 crafting levels. It's a, it's a hell of a lot, and if I go get a Black Demon's Heart straight away and get a Zenite, I'm going to be sitting there thinking, you know what, I want to uh, I want to go get myself an Anguish. That means I've got to go do a hell of a lot of fucking crafting, which, to be honest with you, I don't really fucking want to do, but I will do it, I'm telling you, I will fucking do it. If I get a Zenite, I will go get that crafting level for an Anguish, because I've got no fucking life. But let's get on my Monkey Madness too. Hey, we've just started the quest, and we get 65 smithing, smithing, what the fuck, 65 fire making from unlocking the route for the quest. You know what, what can I say, absolutely bloody wonderful. Well, we killed Gruck, as his remains. Honestly, this is the one boss fight, which I've heard some people have trouble with. I basically just done Sarah on it. If you guys done Hey Kill Sarah, you pretty much just run around the room. Obviously, I haven't got stamina's, but energy pots is fine. The agility course was alright getting here. Uh, it wasn't too bad. I think I got a bit lucky. I'm not sure, but I didn't fail too many obstacles with 67 agility. No, 68 agility. Sorry, so I'm pretty happy with that. But there's Grut killed. I believe there's three more bosses to kill in this. Uh, honestly, I'm actually having fun in the quest. I don't know why, but it's it's kind of cool to get this done because I've never done it. But there is Grut killed. I think this. Could be it. I think it might just be it. I believe we... Once we talk... To Zooknock... I believe there's going to be a cutscene. And I believe we've completed Monkey Madness 2. We talked to King Narnode. Is this it? Will this be it? After this cutscene, I think Monkey Madness 2 might just be complete. This is going to be so satisfying. See this on the screen. Oh, there it is. Monkey Madness 2 complete. Oh, that means only one thing. Black demons need to be unblocked. We need to get a Slayer Helm. And we can start going for Zenites on task. Oh my god, that was so satisfying to have that complete 25k Slayer, 20k Agility, 15k Thieving, and 15k Hunter. Do we get any levels from it? And of course, I've completely forgot about that. We will get a Grand Sea Pod, which is probably the best teleport in the game, in my opinion. Do we get any levels? No, we don't. But 
close to an agility. That's obviously help out for Slayer. Hunter, uh, it's all alright, but this is, this is just the best part about it. This right here. Oh, Monkey Man, there's two complete boys. I'm a happy man. I'm a happy man. I'm going to get on with Slayer. I'm going to finish my task at Trolls. I decided to start doing Trolls House on uh, Jatizo. Oh no, Natus, not sorry. Because I can just kill the Ice Trolls during combat. It's a very quick task, and Slayer experience on Trolls House isn't that good anyway. So I thought I'd just kill those. But once we killed those, I, th I think, I'm not 100% sure, I think I'm going to go to Wildy Slayer to get the points for a Slayer Helm. Then I'm going to come unblock Black Demons. And, well, yeah. The Black Demon grind is going to start. Oh my god, I'm so excited for it. Wow. You know what, I didn't expect anything from the Easy Clue, but we got a Black Pickaxe. That may sound so stupid to some people. Like, honestly, like, what are you chatting? But let me show you something real quick. If you guys don't already know, first of all, this is an Easy Clue item that I can actually go in my house. Um, so I might just put it straight in there now. But, what is good about a Black Pickaxe is, if you look at my weight, a Black pick. Oh no, wait, let me just do this. A black, but we're 16 kilograms right now. And we're still 16 kilograms. A black pickaxe weighs nothing. So it's good for uh, rune crafting if you're doing. Uh, what the hell is it called? Um, Abyss rune crafting. But there we go. Black pickaxe. I am happy with that. Another unique cavalier. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? <laughs> this is our third one. Another black dehyde high body, though. So we're starting to rack up the black dehyde bodies, but if you look now, we have three different types of cavaliers, a duplicate of the dark cavalier. These are more alcables right here, green longsword, and some nature runes. Honestly, not a bad clue scroll. Uh, consider we've got unique, another unique, which is cool, uh, but it's alcables that come with it, which is very, very handy. Now that I've done those clue scrolls, I'm going to finish off my task and get back to getting slayer points in the wildy. Whilst I was doing my task, it made me think, you get... Zenite jewelry in the first place. I'm gonna need an onyx, and to get an onyx, I'm gonna need a lot of chaos runes. I believe it's 28k with the Karamja medium diary, so that's like a hell of a lot. Now, I was just sitting here thinking, well, how am I gonna go about it? Well, I think I can still do it, it's just normally you get all the runes through barrows, but otherwise, I could just buy them. And honestly, I'm willing to put the money in if I get a Zenite to buy them. But I'm gonna sell chaos runes for now, but I will show you if you guys already know. An onyx from the Tazar shop is 300k tockle. If I equip the Karamja gloves, it goes down to 260k. And this guy just down here, uh, over here, I don't know where I'm going. It's the first time I've actually been here in a long, long time. But this guy right here, who sells uh, runes, I'm not sure if you have to sell it to him, but looks of things people have been. We can sell a Chaos Rune for 9 Tockle. With Karamja Gloves, it is also 9 Tockle. I'm not sure if... I'm going to find out if I need to find an Empty Wealth to do this in. But I do know that you need to sell a hell of a... That's 1.4 million. I'm just sure how many Chaos Runes that is. Holy shit. But anyway, we're going to go around. And basically, I can sell uh, Chaos Runes and I can buy the Karamja Gloves for cheaper than normal. So I'm going to get on with that now. And we'll see how much toggle we have at the end of what I'm selling. So we just sold all the runes that we have. No, well, not all of the runes. We sold just the, the chaos runes that we have in our bank. We got up to 76k toggle. Obviously, I don't want to sell all of them. I'm going to keep them in case I need them for absolutely anything. If we deposit all our toggle, I don't know why I deposited it. So we've got 84, 84k toggle right now. We could sell some death runes, we could sell other stuff, but honestly, I don't even wonder if blood runes sell. Will I ever really use blood runes? I know I'll craft a hell of a lot later. I'm going to go check around what couple, what, what runes I have and what, you know, how much they sell for. And I'm going to see if it's worth selling any runes to him, because a lot of these runes, honestly, are really easy to obtain. I can rune craft cosmics and stuff like that. So I'm going to go have a quick look. If it's worth it, I'll sell them, because I want to see if I can get this onyx without spending too much cash. In the end, I decided to sell, I don't know why, but I don't feel like I'm going to use them. I sold all my Chaos Runes and all my Death Runes, didn't have too many. Uh, that puts us up to 110k Tockle, to be precise. We have 110k and 93 Tockle, which means we're well, just under halfway to getting an, uh, an Onyx. Like, I can't even count an Onyx yet, but I thought I might as well sell my stuff I have on me at the moment. I don't plan to use it. 
I'm not going to burst off to get them because I'd rather get the runes from them to sell. Uh, and when I think about it, I'm going to get quite a few resources up until I get a Zenite, hopefully, that I can sell. And as soon as I get a Zenite, if I haven't got the Tockle Needle or the Required Chaos Runes to sell, I will just be whacking my cash stack into it almost. And then hopefully we will get an Onyx, cut it, and go from there. But before I do a Birdhouse run, let's quickly see what our uh, first Wilderness Slayer task it will be. Obviously we've done, I think, I'm not sure how many in a row. But we've done a fair few in a row in the Wilderness. And we're about to find out what our next one will be. Fire Giants. Oh, what a fucking joke. Honestly, Fire Giants is one of the worst ones in my opinion. It is just... That's rough to come back to. But you know what, at least it's good Slayer experience. I'm gonna get with it. Fuck. You know, I've been sitting here. I was doing Wildy Slayer, and one thing I haven't actually shown is I, I've get, got two emblems so far from about three tasks, I think. On my 36 or something. Uh, we've got an imbued magic short bow now, which is quite nice. There's only one in the bank. The rest are just normal uh, short bows. If I ever lose the magic imbued one, I can just go get another one. But then I sat there and I thought, I'm, there's something I'm missing. And that is a fury. And I'm stupid enough to want to go for it, to be honest with you. I have absolutely no idea why. But I just I just want to get the fury. So I'm going to work towards 85 uh, crafting. Currently in the bank we have just under 1k giant seaweed. Buckets of sand are going to be the ones we're going to have to do a lot of work with. And after that I'm going to charter ship the rest until we get to 85 crafting. And then we can get a fury. So when we actually do demonics, we'll have a fury for that. And then straight after that, Obviously, that means we need two onyxes now, uh, but we should be able to do it still. Um, but 85 crafting is the goal, and I'm thinking of just working on it and bashing it out to get it done as soon as possible. So you might not see me too many clips uh, other than crafting the next few ones. Doing crafting bit by bit, and what I mean by that is I'm not going to collect all the sand at once. I'm not going to do everything else at once. I'm going to do it bit by bit so I get a change of scenery so I don't do one thing all the time. Now, our crafting level is currently 76. <clears throat> uh, we've got a hell of a lot of crafting experience at the start of 76 before we turn all this into molten glass. So we got a fair chunk of 76 done just from, you know, spell uh, the spell Super Glass Mate, which is really nice. Now we've got about 600k experience banked here. So 585k, I think, in molten glass. That's going to get me, I think, close to 80, but not quite 80. I'll be very, very close to it, which is very nice. Then after that, we're going to use the rest of the seaweed that we get over time whilst I'm doing the molten glass, which won't be too much because the molten glass shouldn't take that long. It'll take a while, but you know, not long to rack up loads of seaweed. Uh, and then after that, we're probably going to go to charter ships. I'm really not looking forward to going to charter ships, but if I want this crafting level, I'm really going to have to do it. <laughs> that's fucking quality that is pure quality oh that has genuinely made my day i'm actually so happy what the fuck i don't know why that's going in the video i don't even care so we're gonna end the episode there i am currently on the crafting grind like i said i would be we are 82 32 percent away uh through the level sorry we've got 7k molten glass to go at the moment after this, I'm going to need another 20k to get to 87, but to get to 85 is a lot easier. So technically, if I burn out by them, which I doubt it, I will be able to get a fury at 85, but hopefully I won't burn out. I don't know if I did see it myself burn out. It's, I rarely burn out on RuneScape, in all honesty. It's quite hard for me to burn out doing something like this. Um, but I'm not sure. If, the way I've been doing it is, by the time I get loads of molten glass blown, I'll have loads of seaweed. And then... I'll go get my buckets of sand, and whilst I'm getting buckets of sand, I'm still growing seaweed. I'll come back, and I'm just never stopping doing this. I'm never going to charter ships. I don't know if I'm going to continue that or just go to charter ships. I feel like this way, it's just more chill, to be honest. Uh, so I think I might continue this. Um, but that's pretty much it for this episode. I feel like the account is in a really nice position now. I'm really, really happy about the fact that 
I'm on the crafting grind. I was really, really worried about the crafting grind on an Iron Man. And honestly, I'm just getting it out of the way. The majority of it anyway. Getting to 87 allows me to get an Anguish. After that, I feel like getting levels won't be too bad. Because I don't want to torture anytime soon. I don't want to come out a bracelet. I'll get an Anguish. And then after that, I'll have so much seaweed bank that it'll just be getting buckets of sand. And then blowing it after that, obviously. Once I turn it into molten glass. I feel like that's really good. Uh, one thing I will say is, obviously the last clip is me reacting to someone actually recognizing me. I ended up talking to him, asked me if he wanted to join the CC. If anyone that's watching it, feels, uh, feel free to join the CC. It is just RNG, please. It is my uh, my account's name. And just jump in, have a chat. Some, uh, I'll always be in there when I'm online. Uh, my other mate, and I've got a couple of other people. Uh, hopefully this guy will stick around. And I've got another friend who watches my videos as well. He will be in there. Get yeah, people come in and out. Uh, I'd love to create a community, so if you guys are interested to hang out with me or anyone else that watches my videos, definitely feel free to jump in the CC and just chill, really. But that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.